The tiny bombardier beetle is the evolutionist nightmare. It has a unique defense mechanism that could not have evolved gradually. Whenever the beetle feels threatened, it turns its backside and releases an explosive mixture of hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone, resulting in a noxious explosion of superheated chemicals at over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It can even fire four or five bursts in rapid succession. The animal would have had to evolve all of the explosive chemicals, inhibitors, enzymes, glands, combustion tubes, nerves, and all of the muscles to direct each process perfectly the very first time. Otherwise, it would have exploded. Have the supposed scientists just ignored this? I had to investigate. In his 1996 book, Darwin's Black Box, Michael Behe defined an irreducibly complex system as one that contains one or more unselected steps. By unselected, he meant any step that does not benefit the organism. In a 2006 Discovery Institute article, Behe redefined it as a single system which is composed of several well-matched interacting parts that contribute to the basic function and where the removal of any one of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. Regardless of the definition, Dwayne Gish had already presented the bombardier beetle as impossible to assemble step by step in his 1977 book Dinosaurs, Those Terrible Lizards. In response to Gish, Mark Isaac published his own hypothesis for how the structure could appear gradually in 1997. There are over 500 species of bombardier beetle consisting of four tribes and several genera spanning every continent with the exception of Antarctica. While each species has its own variation of the explosive mechanism, the process is generally the same. Hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide are secreted into a reservoir in the rear. When the beetle feels threatened, the reservoir opens through a muscle-controlled valve into a thick-walled reaction chamber lined with cells that secrete catalases and peroxidases which rapidly break down the hydrogen peroxide and catalyze the oxidation of hydroquinones. Both reactions release free oxygen and generate enough heat to bring the mixture to the boiling point and vaporize a good portion of the mixture. Under the pressure of the reaction, the valve is forced closed, which explosively forces the heated chemicals through the openings at the tip of the abdomen. In some species, this can be done in rapid succession, hundreds of times per second. Instead of combustion, some species can expel a jet of heated chemicals. The chemicals involved are very common to insects. Quinones are very common as a tanning agent for their epidermal cuticles, which are periodically shed during molting. Hydrogen peroxide is a byproduct of cellular metabolism as the mitochondria produces adenosine triphosphate to power the cell. It is also used by many living systems as a signaling mechanism. So the two active chemicals are already available to beetles even without an explosive defense mechanism. If there is an excess of quinones, however, there is an immediate benefit to the beetle as predators tend to dislike the taste of quinones. This is a very common defense tactic in beetles, millipedes, and caterpillars, among other animals. Although it doesn't help the unlucky individual, it does help the overall population by deterring predators and giving them an aversion to the species. From here, a simple depression in the dermis between cuticles gives the beetle the ability to secrete quinones on command, if necessary, by simply wiggling. As these simple depressions deepen, they are aided by the development of muscles. The Scientific literature is full of observed duplication mutations. As discussed in episodes 12 and 18, results of experiments with Drosophila flies have shown that a single mutation affects the location of gene expression. This includes duplication and relocation of muscles. Whether the result of either a new muscle or a rearranged muscle, the beetle gains an even more powerful and directed stream. Other insects have this very same structure. For example, ants have an identical structure at the ends of their abdomens. This can now be used for both defense and communication. As subsequent generations of beetle depend primarily on one or two specific reservoirs, the others become inconsequential and eventually atrophy. Meanwhile, as predators develop a resistance to quinones, different chemicals are selected for. Hydroquinone is a toxin and irritant common to many plants, fungi, and animals, including beavers and bees. With this new chemical, the beetle is even less appetizing to predators. Again, through simple duplication mutations, cells that secrete the hydroquinones develop in multiple layers over part of the reservoir allowing more hydroquinones to be produced. Channels forming between cells allow hydroquinones to reach the reservoir. These channels separate the secretory cells from the reservoir surface, allowing them to become separate organs. At this stage, we still don't even have a novel system. Many beetles possess secretory glands connected by ducts to reservoirs, especially in the beetle suborders Cicindelidae, Amphizoidae, and Hygrobidae. 
At no point along the way has the structure required any modifications that haven't been observed in living organisms somewhere, and at no point has any modification failed to add a benefit to the organism. Again, either by duplication or relocation, more muscles adapt which close off the reservoir, thus preventing the chemicals from leaking out when they're not needed. Along the way, the hydrogen peroxide, which beetles have been producing all along in their respiration and cellular metabolism, becomes mixed with hydroquinones. Contrary to many claims, when hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone mix, they do not react violently. They don't even produce any noticeable heat. They simply turn a light brown color. Gish's assertion that the two chemicals explode upon contact came from his mistranslation of a 1968 paper by Schildknecht, Maschwitz, and Maschwitz in the German peer-reviewed journal Zeitschrift für Naturforschung. The point of the article was to determine how exactly the bombardier beetle was able to make hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone react so violently. There is no inhibitor present in the beetle as there is no need for one. This mixture, however, is even more unpleasant to predators. At this point, two other chemical compounds become important. Catalases are produced by all oxygen-breathing organisms as they exhale. In insects, respiration is done through tiny holes throughout their epidermis. Peroxidases are produced by nearly all living organisms through several mechanisms. In prokaryotic life as well as in eukaryotic life, peroxidase often acts as a bactericide, almost like a chemical immune system. Cells secreting small amounts of catalases and peroxidases are located all throughout living systems. Any cells that should appear along the output passage of the reservoir serve to close it off from the outside, allowing for more quinones to appear in the defensive secretions. When catalase and peroxidase interact with hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone, they catalyze the reaction, allowing the mixture to heat up. As can be demonstrated in laboratory conditions, a small amount of catalase and peroxidase has a small effect in hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone, raising the temperature only slightly. An increase in catalase and peroxidase produces a foamy, caustic discharge and fine mist. This is the structure used by the bombardier beetle Metrius as its defense mechanism. As more and more cells are located around the output passage due to selection, the passage becomes firmer, allowing for even more heat and a stronger reaction. As even more catalases and peroxidases are produced, the walls toughen and shape into a reaction chamber as the exit becomes smaller and smaller. The pressure created by the reaction forces the opening to the reaction chamber to close during reacting while allowing for more pressure to build, forcing the compound to be expelled outward in an explosive burst or a spray. We now have the complete bombardier defense mechanism. A longer abdomen would also be selected for as it allows the beetle to aim its discharge in various directions. Whether or not these are the steps that actually occurred to produce the bombardier beetle's defense each one is either the result of changes we've actually observed or co-ops structures and chemicals that are already existing, not only in beetles but in nearly all animals. At every step along the way, the structure serves its basic function of protection and defense, and at every step along the way, the overall fitness of the beetle is improved. Whether or not this is how it happened, and whether or not the bombardier beetle was specially created, their explosive mechanism is not irreducibly complex. They are another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.